have for tonight, it seems that it's interesting to see how the Lord leads us through the weekend. I sense tonight that um, God just wants me to encourage not only you, but be encouraged myself. Just write every day down and be holy. When I was saying that earlier, there, there's this power and poverty that breaks principalities and there's this brewing frustration and ageless temptation to fight for control by manipulation. But this, there's this God of the kingdoms and God of the nations. The end of that song, it says, the child in his arms and love in his eyes and the sound of his heart cry. I asked the Lord on the Isle of Wight last year, what are you crying over? Lord. And the Lord said, I'm crying over you, and I'm crying over the little kid there, and I'm crying over that person over there, and I'm crying over that grandpa over there. I'm crying over my children when they don't let me finish the story I started in them. And uh, so I'm on the Isle of Wight, and I use my plane time because you know, I, I'm only able to be gone about 70 days a year or so um, because I have four kids to raise. So, so when I'm flying, I'm moving fast. And we go to all these nations, and we're like moving very fast. And uh, so I use my time on the plane to study a lot. And I was learning about this little girl named Eddie Healyson. This little girl, Eddie Helisum, uh, she uh, was this little non-religious Jewish girl that lived in Holland during the occupation of the Nazis. And they went into Holland and they took over and they brought these groups of people to this place called Westerbork. And she was one of them. She's this non-religious Jewish girl. ends up in Westerbork and it's a holding camp in which later on she'll be taken to Auschwitz and she'll die. And uh, while she's in Westerbork, she, um, she starts having these amazing encounters with God. And the Lord starts revealing himself to her while in Westerbork. And, you know, the way I'm made is God will just end up giving me books through people or I'll be reading the Bible, I'll be reading the passage just right at the most opportune time for me to grow and learn something. And I'm foolish enough to open my mouth and say things so the Lord will fill me with things, you know. Because <laughs> I think he knows I'll say it. But this is kind of the height of, in the charismatic circles, a lot of talk about Hitler's and Stalin and who's the next this and who's the next that. And it just made me laugh when I read about Eddie. I just started laughing hysterically because I thought to myself, who cares? This lady didn't live in the figment of her imagination. She didn't live in this like, or I shouldn't say that because that makes imagination impure. In the figment of her deranged anxiety, she, she didn't live in that place of trying to find who the next person was that was going to be her enemy. She lived in the midst of her enemy, and the Lord made a table for her. And the Lord met with her, 
And this is what she says. She started writing her diaries and she said, every day, I'm having so many experiences with God here in Westerbork that somebody's got to write all these down so that people will know that God lived even in these times. And I just said, that's it. I don't want to be like fearful prophets. I don't want, because they're false prophets then. Because Jesus is not the center of their lives. I don't want to be fearful and full of anxiety. And I want to be full of hope. I don't want to live the rest of my life sitting on the top of the stairs wondering when Jesus is going to come back. Because heaven is the place that none of us want to go. But when you grow up and all you hear is, he might be coming back tonight. And when he does, by golly, he's going to kick your rear, so get up here. And I'd sit at the top of the stairs, eating my brownie, listening to them. Man, I remember my parents, I've been talking, I love laughing with my parents about it, because they laugh about it now. But, I mean, through the 70s and 80s, they used to sit me in a church. This is almost like abuse, isn't it? <laughs> they used to sit me in a church, and we'd watch these cotton-picking videos of these guys with, like, blisters on their faces and they were horrible movies these movies we, sh we should never have been made to watch these things and I remember as a kid watching these guys coming over the hill and there's this terrible music and this guy would be like and, and I think it was supposed to be the sun in the desert you know and 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 I remember, I remember, oh Lord. Now some people, I just got the thought that some people might think that this is sacrilegious, but actually that's not true religion that we're talking about. So it's not sacrilegious, it's sac false religious. So I am a sac false religious kind of person right now. <laughs> no, but seriously, I... I, I'm sitting there and I'm like watching those things and I used to say now what is that guy doing? Well Jason <clears throat> he didn't make it. <laughs> what? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Any of you that are older. Some of you that are younger you're just having new versions of this. But uh, we're supposed to be full of hope. And here this little non-religious Jewish girl is more full of hope and life in the Jesus way than, than a lot of us Christians. And I include myself in this that live today. We're so focused on all the things that won't change the world. We're so focused on all the things that are opposite of what Jesus said would transform culture and society anyway. We're so focused. Jesus was the victorious one, and he showed us the way. He wasn't just truth. And yet, we're like, oh, okay, Jesus. You're dead and gone now. So now we'll take over, and we'll do it the way that it needs to be done. And Jesus did it a certain way. Because he wanted us to follow that way. Does that make sense? So 